So I'm incredibly excited to come here and uh, talk to you about the most boring and depressing topic in all of computing. Um, security is really important to Kubernetes. Um, so uh, first off, by a show of hands, how many people here run their own Kubernetes or Kubernetes variant um, cluster for themselves or for the, um, the use that they have? Awesome. And how many people uh, use a Kubernetes cluster or Kubernetes variant that somebody else provided for you or run it for a lot of people? OK, a few hands. So that first group, this is what I think of you guys. Um, and it's OK, right? This, that's the point of Kubernetes as a tool. It helps us get our jobs done. It lets us run applications more easily. Um, we can deliver software faster. And all of the benefits of DevOps and all that really come down to, it does it work for you. Um, that second group, that second group um, is maybe the, the alternate side of the world, which is, if we talk about Kubernetes as a platform, um, and we've been talking about Kubernetes as a platform for, for a very long time since the beginning of the project, um, that means that ultimately people are going to do really boring things on Kubernetes. And it's OK to be boring, right? Like, you know, you come in, you do your job, you go home. You want your workloads to run from 9 to 11. You don't want someone to play the radio too loud. You don't want someone to steal your stapler. And this kind of coming together on a platform, um, Red Hat's been involved from the very beginning um, through OpenShift, which is a platform for running multi-tenant Kubernetes. And so we, you know, in the community and um, in OpenShift, we thought a lot about these um, two topics. So there, we're on a journey with security. It's not a destination. It's a series of steps. Um, as we've kind of gone from the do-it-yourself mindset, as we're moving towards platform, there's a number of tools that are going to help us get there. Um, some of them we have today. Our back is really fundamental, um, separating out people into what they can do. Um, a number of these others are also very important. They're things that are available today in Kubernetes. Um, you may not have heard about them, because sometimes we don't do a great job of telling you that you can use these things, or telling you how to use these. Um, there's still a lot of tools that we want to add. So again, this is kind of a forward-looking talk. Um, we want to add things that make it easier to secure Kubernetes, to secure the applications that run on Kubernetes, um, to build a secure ecosystem of tools. And that's going to take time. You know, these are kind of very low-level, feature-y type of details that you may have heard about in an email thread or a blog post or you've seen someone um, mention. And we'll get there, right? Like, it's a journey. We're going to start. We've started in, you know, three years ago in the open source community. And today in 1.6, um, you know, we have our back on by default. Well, mostly on by default. It's on for Cube, um, Cube Atom. And as we add more tools and more deployment mechanisms, a lot of these questions come up, which is, are we doing the things that we need to secure Kubernetes out of the box? Um, do we know all of the questions that we should be asking ourselves as we're deploying Kubernetes? What are the tools' responsibility? If you're, if you're doing it all yourself, maybe these questions are irrelevant to you because you've got everything locked down so tight that only you can see it. You're running a single system, doesn't matter. Um, on that right end of the spectrum, if you're running this for 10,000 people or you're hosting it in a cloud for others to consume, um, a lot of these questions are going to be lifeblood for you. And we need to make sure that as a community, we have the necessary um, steps in place to make it easy to happen. And so the first question, and this is a really hard question, and I think we're still struggling with this. Um, even in the 1.6 release, this actually came up you know, less than a week ago, was are we ready to force everyone in the community, both sides of that spectrum, to be secure by default? And we kind of wavered a little bit. We said, well, you know, if we turn on security for cluster up, which is still you know, a very common way to deploy Kubernetes, we could break people's applications. And if there's one thing that's maybe not more important, but almost more important than security, it's stability. It's that you can trust the applications to keep running on Kubernetes, and that we as a community give you that continuity. That's the most important thing, with security just a smidge down below. So we didn't turn on our back by default in cluster up, but it's on in Cube Admin. And over time, we need to have that conversation in the community about how we as a group, we as a set of users, admins, developers, vendors, loudmouths, people who come in and want to you know, impose their opinions on others, how we try to move this forward together. Um, we want to help make the ecosystem secure by default. And that's going to take work, right? 
Just because Kubernetes has RBAC doesn't mean that the things that run on Kubernetes are using RBAC correctly. Um, we need to go do some of those features there, and that's actually on um, SIGAuth's list. And I, it says Red Hat and SIGAuth. Um, Red Hat is not SIGAuth. Red Hat is a part of SIGAuth. Um, just happens that some of the most paranoid and opinionated people I know happen to work at Red Hat and happen to work on Kubernetes. So as a, as a group, as a community, um, the question I would have for you is, how can you help us get to the point we need to be with security? You need to tell us to be the feedback, to help us set the direction, and to be involved, because this is not something that Red Hat, as a company, is going to go drive. This is something that we're going to participate and help everyone in this room get the security they want without compromise. That's it. Thank you very much.